What's up, y'all? This is Movie Geek Griff for um, Fate of the Furious. Fast and Furious 8. We got two more to go. That's what they say. Another trilogy that starts a new trilogy, 8, 9, and 10. After 10, they said they're going to be done, but if they keep making money, who knows? Um, it barely made... You can tell it's... I, with the domestic box office, it's kind of... Yeah, the nails. Look, it was Easter Sunday, and my girls wanted to paint me. So I got three girls. They wanted to paint me. I don't know. Your six-year-old wants to do something. Your teenager wants to do something like that. Daddy time, you got to do it. Um, so ignore this. Anyway. Anyway. Um, um, so some things have come. Like I said, it's only made $100 million. Um, see myself. So I made a hundred just made a hundred million domestic, but it made five hundred and thirty two million internationally. So that means it beat uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens uh, already. It's international bow. So it's they still they still gonna make money. Notifications, sorry. So it's still making money. They're still gonna make them. Um, but it barely made a hundred million. Uh, domestic its first weekend so it's domestic it's probably not as, probably not going to be as good as the previous ones so I guess I don't know I don't know if um, Paul Paul Walker's slash Brian O'Connor's uh, swan song was what made it grow so much the last time in seven I don't know but um so I say I enjoyed it it was still crazy as it usually is with all the stunts and stuff. But here's the thing, and I was nothing surprised me. And this is the they do it all the time in trailers, um, but this one it really struck a nerve, or it really it really made a difference in my viewing of the movie. Like everything on that screen, I had seen in the previews, and I was just like, "Oh, that's where they do that." Like they showed me in the trailer already. Okay. So they're showing too much. They always do it, but it. Is, I don't think it's ever. Like I guess with movies, I need to stop watching the trailers like a month before, so I kind of forget. But I was still watching all the you know clips and stuff. So everything that happened, I was I had seen it before, so it wasn't as exciting. So I think that's what I'm start doing about a month before movies, big movies. I'm, probably going to stop watching trailers because everything I saw on the screen I had seen I was like it's cool but uh, they already showed it to me before his reason uh, Dom's reason for betraying his team is pretty like okay yeah I might betray my team too so that was uh, the reason he did it was pretty like oh, okay well, I understand that. so he just had to find a way around it but um there was, uh, it's recently come to light that The Rock and, uh, well, not recently come to light. Uh, the Rock has said he has some issues with uh, Vin Diesel on the set. Uh, and you could, he said you could see it in the movie. The only way you can really, you couldn't really see it in the movie because, in effect, they made sure they didn't have too many scenes together. So I think that's, maybe that's what he was talking about. But um, apparently it's come to light that. Ben Diesel's a pretty powerful producer since he's a producer on the series. He cut out uh, a post-credit scene, after-credit scene that would have involved The Rock and Jason Statham's, Jason Statham's character, Shaw, maybe working together trying to do a spin-off movie. He kiboshed that. He killed it. Um, so they said it might be on the, uh, the, the Blu-ray release, DVD release. So actually I was thinking about it. That would be a way to go. Uh, that would be a spinoff worth watching. Uh, uh, the Rocks, Hobbs, uh, Luke Hobbs, and teaming up with uh, Shaw. So that would breathe a little bit new life into the series. I would even dare say bring Country Boy back from uh, uh, from Tokyo Drift. I wanted him to come back because you could really tell without um, 
<coughs> excuse me, Paul Walker there to kind of even out, balance out. Vin Diesel's kind of one-dimensional acting. It was kind of like it was it was a whole bunch of Diesel. So it was like you wouldn't, bro. You like boring. So Paul Walker even that out. Maybe the country boy from Tokyo Drift could even it out again. I like that dude. He should come back. Um, you can keep Bow Wow though. Anyway, um, yeah, and I, I just saw an article that said maybe it's time for Dom to move on from the franchise. That's not going to happen. He's a producer, and uh, he'll make the arc work for two more movies involved him. But it is kind of true. Dom's arc is kind of done. He's no longer a fugitive. He's got a son now. He's got Letty back. There's really nowhere for Dominic Toretto to go. So I can see it. I can see the validity of them saying Dom's not needed in the franchise anymore. His story arc has nowhere else to go, so it kind of makes sense. But anyway, um, Faded the Fury is still good. Maybe if you haven't watched all the previews up to it, so go. I'll still go see it. I'll still go see Fate of the Furious. It's a it's a B movie, three stars. It just you know they show too much in the previews, but definitely still go see it. The madness is still crazy. All right, that's all I got. Movie Geek Griff signing off. Uh, go watch Fate and the Furious, but once you're done, don't go out into the parking lot, get in your car, and try to spin out and do all the crazy shit, because those are professional stunt people, and you will be arrested. I'm out. Y'all take care.